Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished coach and an author from Bulgaria, Mr. Demi Chokolov. Demi, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, Demi is a certified professional coach and an international best-selling author. He is focused on coaching, on leadership and performance. So, Demi, let's talk coaching first. What made you become a coach? Uh, thank you for the question. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, and uh, in this show, I, I'm really delighted for that. And um, the first thing which I'm going to talk about coaching is uh, I decided to become a coach, not accidentally, but it, it, it was very interesting, the story, because mm-hmm. uh, I think the first reason was because coaching was the thing which helped me to get out of uh, part of my life when I felt really miserable. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel good about myself and my goals and everything. I didn't have any goals, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started reading books at that point, personal growth books and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, really changed my life, changed the way I see the world, myself, other people, and uh, really started, you know, getting me to create goals, to create vision for myself and stuff. It, I didn't have that before. Mm-hmm. And, um, and along with that, when I, you know, get out of that, I realized, because I started doing it automatically, I started talking to people in this way, started motivating people by what I was reading. Mm-hmm. And I realized that I have a talent to really put people in ease, motivate them, energize them. Mm-hmm. And when I realized that... Uh, I just started thinking of, okay, I, I can, can I do something with that, you know? Mm-hmm. And people started putting, you know, giving me a feedback around that, that, yo, can you do something with that? And then I, 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 I realized that there is this coaching education, which I can really go and uh, study. And I did it. And, and I realized that I can make good mm-hmm. money out of that, which completed the circle. I don't know if you heard about the Ikigai idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's exactly, you know, something you're good at, something you really love doing, something you, which is good for the world. And also it's uh, uh, money wise is good for you. So so that completed the circle for me. And I decided to go full time with that. How wonderful. So, you know, one of the things that is often asked about coaching, you know, I'm much older than you, but I remember four decades ago when I started my working life, uh, coaching was either done by someone who's a family elder or by someone senior in the company who took a liking for you. Yeah. What has changed in coaching that now people are willing to pay for it? Um, I think what's changed is it was first of all that people realized mm-hmm. that coaching is something really valuable. And it's not about, um, I think here, here is the place to share around the idea, the difference between mentoring and coaching, because I think what you're referring to, not, not exclusively, but very often it's mentoring mm-hmm. uh, because when someone is elderly, someone is, you know, older than you and been through life, they can share with you a lot of insights around that, helping you to go through life, uh, you know, with more wisdom and information. Uh, but coaching is not that. Uh, uh, and the difference there is in coaching, the person who is authority is not the coach mm-hmm. but the coachee mm-hmm. and that's what a lot of people don't understand there so uh what i mean by that is people pe- uh, coaching the main idea of coaching is to really help people get ownership that they have their answers in themselves mm-hmm. they know what they want mm-hmm. but they just need someone there with different questions tools and different insights to help them to unleash these answers mm-hmm. You know, mm, wonderful. So, so this is the difference, yeah. And that's people realize that that's why it now became more and more popular in the world. I think amazing, amazing. So, you also speak about your six month life and career accelerated program. Tell me a little yeah. bit about your program and how does it work, and give me examples wherever possible. Yeah, of course. So uh, this is a program which uh, it's it's my favorite one. It's my uh, it's a program which I, I I you know created after a lot of years of work um, with different fields and people. Mm-hmm. And the program is uh, is called Accelerator because it helps people to accelerate. I often say 10x the speed mm-hmm. uh, of 
creating what they want to create in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most important part there is I, I, when people ask me, what do you do there? How do you help people with that? Mm -hmm. uh, I always uh, say this, you know, quote, which I came up with this was, I help people to get out of their box to mm -hmm. start living their truth. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, uh, what, what we do there is we do this process of deboxi I, I, deboxification. Mm -hmm. if you, you, it's, it's a term which doesn't exist. I came up with it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's the idea of um, what I refer to box is all the limiting beliefs, fears, um, and all the models we have created in life in order to you know survive but it doesn't help us to thrive in life mm. and this is the box which all of us have mm. and what i'm helping people with is to identify this box together to really learn why this box is there in the first place how is that box helping us and mm. helped us in life and how we and after we do that we learn how to together with the coachy how mm. to release let go of a lot of these models so that we can see the world in a different way mm -hmm. and they can start creating mm. more and more in what they want to create in life. Mm. doesn't matter if this is career, in personal life or whatever it is there. Mm. So um, uh, you said that examples, uh, I, can, I can share some examples. And mm. for example, there were, there were people, and that's very important also to understand mm -hmm. in coaching, they're coming with an idea of, okay, I want to uh, develop in my career. Mm -hmm. that's that's my intention but then after we create this process of deboxification which i'm talking about mm -hmm. they realize that their real intention is for example one of them was exactly that want to develop in their in his career but he decided to buy a boat and start traveling the world with it mm -hmm. and that was that was the this process of deboxification helping him to realize fully what he wants mm -hmm. and now until this, this was six years ago and mm -hmm. he still is doing that he creates a blog about how to travel the world with the boat and stuff. And he's happy with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's an example how this can help a person to really start living their truth mm -hmm. in what they want to do. I have numerous examples about, around, for example, people who decided to go around Europe uh, on hitchhiking mm -hmm. and that helped them to find out there is another example of a person who, who did that working with me. And then he became one of the best uh, stand-up comedians in Denmark wow. right nowadays so so this is just just some examples of that some people just go for career but then decide they want to leave the job and start their own business mm. right fascinating fascinating yeah so another question that is often asked to me is that how long should a coaching relationship be for I Personally, I believe that uh, my programs are minimum like six months. Mm -hmm. uh, they go, I, I've been working with people for two, three years mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it personally depends of the, of the person. Honestly, I think this is a, 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 life, a lifelong process for a person. And that doesn't have to be with one coach. Like you can change coaches and you can go from one to the other. It depends on what are your intentions and you know goals right now. But uh, I think the minimum is six months because in order to create a habit, in order to change habits, in order to start living different, you know, in different ways, see the world in different way, you need time. Mm. Um, some people say, okay, but why? Let's have one session or something. Mm. It's, it's not working like this because this is not about the, just the insights you're going to get, but it's about how to apply these insights in life, mm. how to really start living in a different way. And mm. having accountability, having the person, the coach next to you, it's helping you to really keep the process mm. of continue changing and continue creating what you want mm. to create. So I, that's the short answer. Six months and then you go to... The, the as long as possible I mean, what, yeah as long as possible yeah i agree and yet there is a you know for a coachy how does the coachy evaluate whether she or he has a good coach <laughs> that's a that's a that's a very good question and uh much the the short answer is uh it's, it depends again and it also it's very um um uh, it's subjective it's mm -hmm. for it's 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 about you know how the two people really um, connect with each other. There is there can be a coach which which is the coach is great and a lot of experience, but doesn't match the client. And there is there are coaches which are maybe don't great experience, but they can match the client. But there are several points I just want to point out mm -hmm. here. Uh, general points which I believe make a coach really good. Mm 
Hmm. Uh, the first one is the degree of presence the coach has. So okay. one of the most important thing is that the active listening. So how, how, how do you listen? Very important for the coach to listen between the lines, to, to really listen fully the person, not thinking in head what you want to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is this uh, thing of ethics and confidentiality, very important for the coach mm-hmm. because people share very, very personal stuff with you and mm-hmm. you need to have this ethics in, you in order to keep mm-hmm. going ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there is there 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 is this place of um, mm, you need to create a, a space of, of trust. That's also something very important for a coach. And also, mm. I'm saying that because some people don't know them as as, as ticks, but they feel them. Mm. You know, they feel okay. I feel trust uh, that this person established trust with me. I feel this person listens. It creates space for me. Mm. Uh, all of these things, they are there, but you don't know. So that's why I'm saying them now. So people really can go. And there is one thing which is not part of, you know, some rules, but definitely is important that the coach believes, mm-hmm. deeply believes that the person in front of him has answers, mm-hmm. has the answers inside. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe that and you believe that you know more than the person for their life, mm-hmm. this is not coaching. Right. Yeah. It's 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 a crucial importance mm. uh, that people. Excellent answer. People Thank you. That. Excellent yeah. answer. So yeah. the other question, Demi, is that you know you must be coaching people who are senior leaders. There are mm. also people who are emerging leaders. Mm. Uh, what is the difference between coaching senior leaders and emerging leaders? And if you have coached such that, uh, people, give me an example without names, of course. Yes, I've been wor- working with uh, both, of course. Uh, and uh, I would say the, the answer here is uh, what, what is my experience? I'm not going to go too much in depth for the sake of the time, but uh, the senior leaders, people who are working very, you know, long time and they're in their field, they are working. The biggest thing which I realized for them is about um, work life balance. This is the place we work a lot with them because. Because they are already established, they do stuff. They are great in what they do, but they, 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 they struggle with with finding this balance between these two: their family life and their friends and stuff, which is crucially important for the well-being of the person, as we know. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to uh, emerging leaders, what I what we work very often is about their confidence as leaders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to find out this confidence inside to help them to really grow as leaders and to really learn how to lead in the right way nowadays mm-hmm. because leading leadership also changed throughout the years and it's changing all the time because you know of the of, you know right nowadays the things are changing very fast in whatever yeah. we do correct so uh that's the short answer around that no, good yeah Great response and and another question related to the one i just asked you is you know, millennials and Gen Zs are now getting into leadership roles in most companies. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think most companies by another three or four years will have most of the leadership from the millennials category. What are the areas you think millennials and Gen Zs need to be coached in? A, uh, excellent question. And uh, there is definitely a difference between millennials, Gen Zs and in the other, uh, uh, the other um, people before that. Hmm. Um I think there are several areas, and the two of them are definitely uh, patience mm-hmm. uh, and uh, temperance. And I'm going to explain why is that. Because nowadays, everything, we grew up in an era when everything happens very fast. Correct. And it creates an illusion that the things are going to happen fast everywhere. Mm. And when you become a leader and create projects and do stuff, if you don't have enough patience, and in temperance, not getting everything in one place at once, you got really frustrated and you start making a lot of mistakes. Mm. And and uh, I don't know if you heard, but there is this study that the lifespan of people became like seven, eight seconds, like not lifespan, sorry, the um, our focus attention span mm. yeah, of mm. people, which is which is a big sign of what actually people need to work on. Right. And and that's something which we focus a lot. And there is a piece of discipline which we need to be working also with uh, this uh, with millennials and mm. Gen Z's I think interesting yeah. so uh, Debbie now let's move to your book uh, yep. tell me a little bit about your book uh, 
the name of the book and whether it's available on Amazon. And then we'll talk about what made you write the book. Yeah, perfect. So the book is uh, called Visionary Male Leaders. And it's actually, we are uh, 15 male leaders who are writing the book together. Okay. Um, this book is available on Amazon. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's available in India as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can buy it there. Um, and the book is about, the main idea of the book is about um, creating the balance and um, between masculine and feminine traits to become the best leader you can be. I see. So, so this, is, this is the main uh, feature of the book, mm. uh, to remove the toxic masculinity out of the leadership positions mm. and to really integrate the feminine sides so that it can become a holistic and more effective leader. Fantastic. So tell me a little more about what are the, 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 the masculine and feminine attributes each of the male leaders has or should have. Yeah, that's that's a great question. So uh, let's talk with the, first with the masculine parts. That's you know the purpose. That's the focus. That uh, that the discipline. That's our things. That's a that are traits which every leader should possess, and they are more mm-hmm. masculine. You know, mm-hmm. you're doing it. You are going. You are disciplined. You are taking steps. You are taking action. Mm-hmm. You know, this 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 makes the project work. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have the feminine sides, which is compassion, mm-hmm. which is a little bit more of empathy. Mm-hmm. which is a little bit more of uh, really being interested genuinely in people, talking, listening, uh, and there are many more, of course, then uh, there is this becomes kind of discrepancy and there is no uh, the soft side of really creating the connections with your team, for example, so that the purpose and, and, and goals you have put to start really uh, going words you know otherwise it becomes like robot like idea okay let's make that everyone is making it there is no complaints and stuff mm-hmm. just do it but it doesn't work in this way you need to put a little bit the oil like we said you know mm-hmm. which is the feminine the soft side when uh which actually creates the will you know mm-hmm. the will to start going towards uh towards the purpose you have put very very interesting so let me now move to a few questions for you personally. You know, my, my viewers and listeners love to get to know my guests a little better. Uh, what would you say are three lessons you would like our viewers and listeners to take away from our conversation? Um, so the first lesson definitely is that, and it's part of the coaching idea, that you have the answers inside. Mm-hmm. Don't forget that you have all the answers. You know what you want. You want when to go. Yes, maybe they're not like a parent right now, but they're going to come if you believe deeply that you have them. Sure. The second one is the, the lesson with patience. And I, I put it, make, I can put it together, patience and consistency. So it's if you stay long enough in a, in a certain you know, direction, in the mm-hmm. trail there, you're going to reach it. But you need time. You need to stay, you know, in the place. So mm-hmm. learning how to be patient and consistently moving towards something is super important. Maybe it won't happen for a week, mm-hmm. a month, a year, but it will happen eventually if you really want it. Mm-hmm. And the third one is uh, learning the power of love. I'm, my, my, my chapter in the book uh, we already mentioned is called The Transformation of Power of Love, you know. Mm-hmm. And... Um, um, it's actually, it's a really transformational when you learn mm. how to apply, how to learn loving yourself, other people in the world in the mm. right way, because love is a very creative force mm. and power. Use it, how to create it in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, that creates a lot of great waves, waves for us and the people around us. Very interesting. My next question to you, Dimi, is what are some of the core values you believe in? Yeah, that's a um, that's that. Uh, when when I when I talk about values, I always always you get very excited about it because for me values are um, it's it's they're your north star mm-hmm. in life, and uh, a lot of decisions you make, uh, the way you act in life, it's connected with these values. So for me, the first is love. I mean, obviously, yeah. the second one is family. Mm-hmm. Family is a great value for me. Self mastery. 
part of also the, what I do, integrity and loyalty. I think that's the first five, you could say. Great, great set of values. Uh, I have time for two or three more questions. My next question is, uh, you know, after such an amazing career and as a coach, what does success mean to Demi? That's a great question. It's again part of coaching. So um, for me, coaching, uh, success is, uh, if not reaching, going pretty close mm-hmm. to your, your creative potential. Mm-hmm. So that's for me is a great success if a person Mm-hmm. Because from person to person, this is this differs. But if you if you can go pretty close or getting your creative potential in place, mm-hmm. that's a big success for me. Fabulous. And a follow up to success is who or what inspires you? Always great causes. People who are really fighting for great causes. So when you talk about India, we can talk Gandhi. Gandhi is a great inspiration for me. Martin Luther King. People like who are really devoted to a cause and they're putting their heart and their time and their, you know, uh, and their sweat, I could say, in into this cause. That creates so much inspiration for me. Uh, and uh, it doesn't have to be like big like them. It can be just an employee who is working for a company and devoted to this company, that also is inspiration for me. Fascinating. And my last question to you, and this is for the many young people who will listen to our conversation, what would your advice be to a young individual starting off on her or his journey as a manager in life? I would say that um, for the young managers and people, they just go and it's very simple. Just stay in the process and pay attention. Mm -hmm. Because in the process, when you pay attention, you're going to learn and you're going to grow. Yeah. Wonderful. So on that note uh, of stay in the process and pay attention, Dimi, thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about coaching, your own personal experiences on coaching, the amazing work that you are doing on coach in, in the area of coaching. Thank you for talking to me about your book. And I urge all our viewers and listeners to have a look at that book. Check it out on Amazon. I will go and check it out myself. And thank you for uh, your amazing conversation. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast. A platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.